before we jump too deep into this, I want to get one thing out of the way. If budget's not an issue for you, go buy the most expensive mirrorless camera that you can afford and buy a 600 millimeter lens or a 400 millimeter 2.8 and book yourself a trip to Alaska or Costa Rica. You're going to be happy. It's that simple. But if budget is an issue for you, like me and most of the folks that I know, and you have to make financial decisions and you want to know where you can compromise, stick around. This is going to be the video for you guys. Hey friends, welcome back. Don't adjust your screen. It's me. I'm not uh, off on an adventure with some uh, voiceover and you looking at me as I'm laying down on the ground. Uh, it's been a slow week for bird photography. I've been out just about every day trying to photograph birds and it's been tough. Uh, you know, plenty of geese out there. I'm not sure how excited you guys get about geese uh, and definitely an abundance of seagulls. When things are slow, my mind starts to wander. And being on YouTube, of course, my mind wanders to ideas and uh, subjects that I'd love to cover on this channel, but I'm just not quite sure how to do it. Most recently, something that's been running through my head is you know, a little guidance to new bird and wildlife photographers on camera selection and lens selection. Really what it comes down to is what advice would I have liked to have had when I was making my first purchase for a wildlife photography setup. So sit back, grab a cup of coffee. This one's gonna be a little bit longer than usual. We're gonna cover some great material. We're gonna start at the beginning of my photography career, uh, starting with an entry-level DSLR that I bought from Best Buy all the way to my most current equipment, which is the mirrorless Nikon with the 600 millimeter F4. I'm gonna tell you about the pros and cons of all of them. At the end, at the very end, I'm gonna give my recommendation as to what I would buy today if I was starting over and, and I was limited on a budget. Guys, before we go diving too deep into this, I want to make one thing abundantly clear. YouTube, um, just because I have a YouTube channel, it doesn't make me an authority on anything. Uh, as a matter of fact, I am very uh, particular about assigning authority to myself on just about any subject unless it's my career, which I've been at for about 20 plus years. Uh, I'm not a professional photographer. What I am and what I'd like you to consider me as a friend that's just simply offering some advice. Um, imagine you've got a friend that's been doing photography for a while and you just like to pick his brain. Well, that's me. So as you're going through this and you're listening to some of my suggestions and some of uh, the things that I've learned in the past and you have some questions, put it in the comments. Uh, let's start a conversation. I'm here for you guys. And not only that, there's a lot of talented guys that comment on this video and, and throughout all of my videos. And you'll be surprised how some of these uh, more seasoned guys, these veterans will be glad to reach out and help you along as well. Let's start at the beginning. I was a broke dad, um, you know, two high school kids back in 2013, 2014 timeframe. And spring migration was starting again and I wanted to start photographing birds. Uh, we had been looking through binoculars uh, since 2000 and uh, heck, 1999, had been avid birders. And we just wanted to take it to the next step. It was time to stop telling people what we saw and start showing people what we saw. So I wanted to be able to tell the story. Now on a limited budget, uh, the first thing I had to do is decide uh, what I could afford. And 
it was definitely going to be under that $1,000 range. So we went to Best Buy and we bought the Nikon D3200, which came with a 55 to 300 kit lens. So step number one and advice number one when buying cameras, especially in wildlife photography, at least get 300 millimeters. 70 to 300, uh, 55 to 300, or a 300 millimeter prime. Uh, it's very difficult to get close to wildlife subjects. And it's been my experience that a 300 millimeter is about as low as you wanna get, uh, especially if you're gonna be photographing small birds. I realized pretty quickly that the Nikon D3200 wasn't exactly, uh, it wasn't the best camera for wildlife photography. So I upgraded to the Nikon D7100, uh, which was kind of the mid-level uh, DSLR, uh, a lot of professionals were using it. Uh, the reviews online were fantastic. A 24 megapixel CMOS crop sensor camera. In other words, uh, my 300 millimeter was the equivalent of a 450 millimeter lens. And then if you added a teleconverter, say a 1.4 on it, you now had over 500 millimeters worth of reach. So let's start with that D7200 and the 70 to 300 lens. I took some great pictures with this. Uh, what it taught me is how to get close to animals, how to get close to birds. You're not exactly sneaking up on everything uh, when you first start out. I learned that I needed to use camouflage. I learned that I needed to get as low as I possibly could. I had to learn all the methods of calling in birds. Uh, and more specifically, I had to learn to compose a shot because if I'm not getting close to it, I had to learn to include that scene as best I could. The Nikon D7200 was a fantastic camera. It was wonderful. There was nothing I could say about it that wasn't um, just on point in every portion. The problem is, is I'm a consumer. And as I'm taking pictures with this Nikon D7200, I'm looking at uh, other products that are coming out, specifically full frame cameras like the D600. And at that time, the Nikon D800. When I decided to make the jump to full frame cameras, the Nikon D810 was the no brainer choice. Uh, reviews on the Nikon D810 were comparing it to medium format cameras. Uh, the, the image quality was fantastic. But I noticed with the 70 to 300 zoom lens that I had, it wasn't really blowing me away. Yeah, the images were a little creamier, the, the resolution was better, I could crop in tighter. It wasn't until I started doing a little more research that I realized how important lenses play in making a beautiful image. So I made the first big lens decision of my life, and that was buying a 300 millimeter F4, uh, a prime lens. It, there was no uh, zooming in and out anymore, and F4 was a lot faster. Previously, I'd been shooting with that f5.6 at 300. I was picking up a full stop of light, and I'm gonna tell you guys, that's when I started to see the difference. As you're taking a look at a few of these images, just notice the creamier background. Uh, notice that uh, the bokeh is just a, it's a prettier look to it. Now, full disclosure, once again, you show that to an average person uh, compared to a 70 to 300, maybe they don't see it. It became clear the only people that could tell the difference uh, were other photographers, which was good enough for me. Uh, beautiful images with the Nikon D810, gorgeous step up uh, with the 300 millimeter F4. And my other big piece of advice is that if you're gonna make an initial investment right up front, go with that good glass. Find yourself one of those 300 millimeter F4s or whatever prime piece of glass you can find uh, that is in your budget. That 300 millimeter F4 was a gateway drug. Uh, it opened the door for me to look at other prime lenses. The next purchase was a 300 millimeter 2.8. Then I got a 400 millimeter 2.8. And I could see the difference. I could see the difference. But this leads me to what I consider 
the best advice on this entire video, and that is this. The difference didn't come so much in my image quality in that I was learning my craft a lot better, I was editing a lot better, and more importantly, I was paying attention to my backgrounds, I was paying attention to light, and I was doing everything I could to really start composing my images better. I figured that if I had the best equipment uh, that money could buy at the time, I better get off my, uh, my butt, so to speak, and learn how to do this. Now, as everyone knows in the world of photography, enough is never enough. As the lens opened the gateway into more lenses and bigger lenses and faster lenses, uh, so did that resolution, chasing uh, those better, sharper images. So I bought the Nikon D850, best camera I've ever owned. I've made a video about it. I'm going to put a link up here for you to check it out. That tells you why I switched from DSLR to the mirrorless. I can sum it up real quick. It was for video. DSLRs are not the easiest things to operate for video. And I do YouTube videos now. Uh, but the D850 is hands down the best camera I've ever shot with. The resolution blew me away. Uh, just the sharpness of the images, the way it, it processed the, the, the highlights and the dark areas, that high contrast. It was flawless, absolutely flawless, except that I couldn't stand using it for video. Uh, alongside that, I bought the Nikon 200-400 f4, which is an extremely good lens. Can't recommend that thing enough. Uh, and then I made the big jump to a 600mm f4. I couldn't afford a new $13,000 lens. And look, let me back up. Not once during that entire buying process did I buy a new camera except for the Nikon D850. Everything that I had bought from the beginning when I upgraded to the D7200 was used. Uh, and you can see some of those prices that I've post. Now I have this Nikon D850 and the only thing left to do was to upgrade to the fast glass. And I got the Nikon 600 millimeter F4. It was one of the first generations Actually, it was like the third generation. This is about 20 years old. It's the AF-S2. Doesn't have VR, but I knew I was gonna be mounting on a tripod. And um, there was nothing left to do but to get better. And that's where I find myself today. Guys, let me bring this home. Today I'm shooting with a 20 year old 600 millimeter F4. I bought a Nikon Z62 used. I didn't even buy the new one. I got it for about $1,700. My lens was under $5,000. Total invested around 7,000 plus my video rig that I'm shooting on here. Um, my question I have to ask myself now is how much better would my images be if I had a $7,000 camera and I upgraded to a $14,000 lens. My argument, and I think it's pretty safe argument, is it wouldn't be that much better, maybe three to 5%. Here's what I do know. Here's what will improve your images. Watch your backgrounds. Uh, get eye level with your subjects. Pay attention to the light. Study composition. And above all, get better at editing. From the beginning to the end, what I noticed above all is that my editing improved. <laughs> and I can even go back to some of the images I took with that Nikon D7200 and that very inexpensive 70 to 300 lens, and I can make them look pretty darn good through editing. All right, guys, here's the equipment recommendation. Very simple, if you can afford a prime lens, that should be the way to go. 
uh, whether it's a 300 F4, whether it's a 500 F5.6, 400 28, 600 F4, prime glass just gives you better, sharper images. And the lower the aperture, the faster the glass is, the longer you can shoot into the evenings, the more light it lets in, uh, the better bokeh it renders. Fast glass, prime is the way to go. Uh, if you can't get that prime glass and you want a little more flexibility, there are two lenses on the market right now that just I absolutely love. One of them is that Sony 200 to 600. Uh, I think it's a F 6.3 at the high end, so not as good with the light, uh, but incredibly sharp, in incredibly light lens. Uh, you attach that to like the Sony A7S III or, or any of those full frame uh, cool new Sonys that are out, you can't go wrong with that. Nikon offers that 200 to 500, 5.6, extremely light, very flexible. Uh, that attached to a Nikon D810 or a D850, or if you want to go with like the D600, 610, uh, fantastic combo. My recommendation though is to stay away from those crop sensor cameras right off the bat. You're gonna want a full frame eventually. Just skip it, go straight to the full frame cameras. I appreciate you guys watching. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.